Hey everybody, and welcome back. Uh, apologies, we're in a little bit of a different recording setup today. Um, I, I am not at home. I'm back in Kansas City um, visiting some family. Um, so no, no record or no video recording, I suppose, of my face. And we're going to be recording on the laptop today. So bear with me. It might get a little clunky, but we're working with it. So today we're going to be looking at using the built-in ownership functions with our PyDFS optimizer. Um, I know ownership is a major um, core component of Daily Fantasy that up to this point we've pretty much ignored. Uh, but that, that ends today. So we're going to be looking at the built-in methods um, that our PyDFS lineup optimizer can handle ownership, how we bring it in, what it does, how it uses it, etc. So, to start with, we're going to go ahead and initiate our optimizer. Um, we're going to load players. However, we're going to go ahead and put in a player ownership column here. Player ownership. I believe that's what the name needs to be. And then just for the sake of our video here, we're just going to give it a random value. Um, and that this is going to be a percentage, so 0.103 is 10.3%, 0 0.29 is to 29.2%. Uh, we're just going to do that a couple times. It gives us a random value each time. Um, so you can see that, you know, these aren't going to be necessarily realistic values, but the values are there. The point here is seeing how our lineups change as we alter some of our uh, parameters. Not necessarily that we have realistic ownerships and realistic lineups. So... Once we've done that, um, we're going to go ahead and load our optimizers, and then we're going to take a look at that, um, the, just a data frame of our Excel sheet we were just looking at to make sure we have ownership here. And then we're going to go ahead and get our um, and I don't think that came through correctly because we should be seeing ownership here. So I bet projected ownership. There we go. Now let's save that. Let's come back, start over again. And now we should be getting our ownerships being brought in to our lineups. Yep, there we go. So now we can see average ownership for each lineup here. So now projected ownership is the name of the column if you want to bring it in with your player list CSV. Um, that's going to be what you use. Once you have the projected ownership for each player in, you can set a min and a max average ownership per lineup. And it is important to note that the way ownership is utilized within PyDFS Lineup Optimizer is only using the average ownership for the lineup. So this lineup, we have an average ownership of 45.4, and keep in mind there are no restrictions on this set of lineups. So they're, you know, we've been over this before. They're all going to be very similar to each other. Um, ownerships are changing slightly here as the players swap in and out. But from lineup 1 at 403.2 to lineup 10 at 400.4, very, very similar lineups, okay? And we can see that looking at the statistics. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 players on all 10 lineups, okay? So that obviously is not a good set if we're trying to run the table because we are very heavy on six players and then even still then pretty heavy on John Collins. And then we just have a couple guys filling in the gaps there, um, which is good if you're super confident in your six core, but ideally you probably want to spread it out a little bit. So another thing you can do is update the, you can update the ownership by player. So if you run your optimizer, and let's say you thought Sabonis should be on more lineups. Um, this isn't going to impact that right now because we're not changing anything. But we can see his ownership comes in at 63.97%. That's fairly high. And again, these were randomized. Those aren't the actual ownership values or anything like that. So let's say we wanted to say, you know what? I want to change that so he's 50% projected owned because I want him on more lineups and he's pulling the average up too high. It makes his lineups, you know, not very good. 
we can do that. And now we can see that our Sabonis projected ownership, let's go ahead and pull Sabonis in again, run it again, now it's 0.5. If we wanna change it back to 0.69, we can do that. Now it's 0.69. So you can change it on a player level. Um, you can get a group of players and change it, you know, loop through that list of players and change it. It doesn't have to come in on the CV, CSV, you can manually apply it. Um, I think you're better off loading up a set in the CSV and then just changing the specific players you want. Um, but, you know, whatever works for you works for me. So do it as you wish. And you can ignore this text because I was wrote this out the first time I did it, obviously, the, the randomness changes for each iteration. So if we go back and check our data frame here, we can see that it still shows the 63.9%. So if you ever need to go back and you want to change it to what it originally was, you can either look at the CSV. If you've loaded the CSV up as a data frame, you can check the data frame, or you can just reload your player list altogether and start over from there. But that's so we can see now we're using 0.5, even though in our CSV it's 0.6397 because we manually updated it. Now, how to use our max projected ownership. So it's pretty simple. Just once we have started our optimizer and we've loaded players, whether it's from CSV or a player pool, either method is fine. Um, assuming your players have a projected ownership associated to them, we just run optimizer dot set projected ownership. And there are two parameters that you can pass to that min projected ownership and max projected ownership. So for here, our min projected ownership defaults to zero. That's the minimum. Um, but that is the first parameter that comes in line here. So we have to define max projected ownership because we're passing parameters out of order. And just for our proof of concept, we're going to do is one or a hundred percent. So in theory, this should not change our lineups at all. We go ahead and run that, and we can see that we still have six of those main players on all lineups. And you'll notice here, we are reloading our players from CSV because we're instantiating a new optimizer, which means that Sabonis is going to be back at what he was in the CSV. Yep, so he's back to 0 0.6397786. So that's important to remember too. If you're doing multiple runs um, and you want the ownership to be a specific level for each of them and you manually altered some, you're gonna have to manually alter them every single time that you start a new optimizer, okay? Because that creates a new optimizer object and none of your manual alterations have been applied to it yet. So we've seen that that does not impact our lineups really at all. Um, we're going to do the exact same thing and we're going to put our max projected ownership at 45%. Um, let's double check these. All right. Let's get it. Let's see how much it changes. So the easy way, we're not going to look at every lineup um, in totality. We're just going to take a look at here and we're going to see how our player spread changes because I think that's a quick, easy way to be able to see how things are changing. So right off the bat, you can tell we only have three teams with 10 players. And now we're down to four players that are on all 10 lineups. McCollum, Brogdon, Hero, Turner. And before McCollum, Hero, Turner. Yep, so they were all there before. So no one knew slid into that 10 spot. But those four, those four players are still there. And then John Morant's down to nine, Bledsoe. So now we have six, six, five, five, four, four, two, two. And then the ones, whereas before, we are pretty much dropping from 10, six, and then down to three, two, ones. So a little bit better spread, more combinations, more lineup options. I'm gonna have you, you know, give you a better chance of having that one lineup that hits and wins you the big money. We drop that max projected ownership down to 0.3. We'll take a look at kind of the same metrics here. And now you can see only Malcolm Brogdon is gonna be used on all 10 lineups. And again, with these randomized um, ownerships, it could be that Brogdon has an ownership of like zero, right? Um, so again, these aren't necessarily accurate, um, but it does kind of give you an idea of 
how changing the ownership is going to impact our lineup construction. Just by looking at the players that were being used previously and how it's changing out. So let's drop it down to 0.15, see if we move out even more. And wow, now we have one, two, three, four, five players on all 10 lineups. So this is a good example of just because we're lowering our projected ownership does not mean that we're guaranteed to have a larger spread of players because we're going to hit a point where we need to keep our ownership so low, there's going to be a few players that need to be on pretty much every lineup if we're maxing our fantasy points um, because they're the only ones that fit without driving up our, our averages. And again, you know, these aren't the accurate numbers, so it's not going to be the best example to go through and look at the individual lineups. We drop it down to 0 0.05, so now our average ownership can only be 5%. So yeah, we see these guys on here. They're going to be pretty low as far as what their averages are, um, and that really limits the players we can use just because we have to have an ownership so low, right? And you can pair this. Let's say we do our... 45% one. You can pair this with things like um, exposure. So if we did optimizer set projected ownership, optimizer dot set, and I might be not remembering that parameter correctly. Oh, that's right. It's not up here, it's down here. Max exposure equals, so let's say players can only be used on 50% of our lineups. So you can combine these. Um, and now if we look at it, we're gonna have a pretty good spread here where we're limiting the max exposure and we're limiting the max projected average ownership. Um, and again, that is average ownership. So it's gonna take the ownership of all the players on each individual lineup, add it up, divide by the number of players in the lineup, and that value has to be less than 45%. So that's gonna be it for this one. Um, pretty simple implementation. We're not getting too deep into the different complications and combinations of how we can use some of these different parameters together. Um, just keep in mind, uh, I know we've ran into it a couple times in previous videos, but if you put, if you make too many rules and it's too strict, um, and you're trying to get a lot of lineups, you're probably going to air out because it won't be able to create enough lineups based on the rules that you give it. So do be aware of that. Um, but that's going to be it for this one. Huge thank you to everyone on the Patreon. I know it's been a while since I've put out a video. Appreciate those of you still there for sticking with me. Um, and I know I'm not at home now. I'm on the